Hello and welcome to Open Treasure, the museum at Durham Cathedral. My name's Sean, I'm the exhibitions assistant here at the museum, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Conyers Falchion, which is one of my favourite objects in the whole collection. Although it looks like a sword, it's not really. It's a tenancy agreement. The Conyers Falchion was given to the Conyers family, uh, along with lands, rights and titles, first by William the Conqueror and then the Bishop of Durham. And over time, this sword came to represent those titles. And every time there was a new Bishop of Durham who entered the diocese for the first time at the southernmost point, which was near Crofton Tees and Sockburn, where the family was based, they would meet with the Bishop and hand this sword back to him. In that way, they were handing back all their lands, rights, titles, power, and only with his permission uh, would he give the sword back to them and give them their land back. It became a symbol of loyalty. This tradition went on for hundreds of years. It was briefly stopped during the 19th century. Um, it last happened in the 19th century um, on a train going over the river and the ceremony took place in private. It was later restored in the 20th century and was last used by the current bishop who met with the mayor of Darlington uh, where the ceremony took place with the sword handed over um, and some of you may have seen that reported in the press and TV a few years ago. It has quite a lot of symbolism, this sword, because in legend it killed the Sockburn worm. Now there's a lot of worm mythology in the Northeast. You have the Lambton worm, the Bamber worm, Hilton worm, and the Sockburn worm. And the current theory is that these worms uh, appear more in the Northeast because they are representations of Viking longships. The Vikings came in long, thin, fast-moving ships with demonic heads carved on the front. And these beasts in literature are long, thin, quick-moving uh, animals with large, demonic faces. And therefore, it's a way for local families to tell the story of how they protected their land from the biggest threat the Northeast had ever faced. This one killed the Sockburn worm. And carved into the cross handle, there are dragon heads at either side with their long bodies going into the middle. Now this has ended up inspiring perhaps one of the most famous poems uh, in the English language. When the Conyers family had died out, in order for the ceremony to take place, someone had to look after the sword. And that was responsibility was given to the rector at Croft on Tees. And for many years, the rector at Croft on Tees was Lewis Carroll's father. Lewis Carroll, from the age of 11, grew up with this sword in his house, with the story of the killing of the Sockburn worm. And if he's like any other 11-year-old I know, he probably would have had a go at the sword, probably picked it up and played about with it and thought about it a lot. And when he's back home visiting his father, he takes inspiration from Sir John Conyers, the knight with a magical sword killing a demonic beast, and he writes the first verses of what would become Jabberwocky. So we are as sure as we can be that this is the inspiration for Jabberwocky and the Vorpal Blade. Uh, that is, that's secretly why it's my favorite object in the collection. It has a, a wide ranging history with literary you know, connections that people just don't expect the cathedral to have an object like that. There's plenty more stories like that in Open Treasure and we look forward to sharing some of them with you uh, soon.